Ah, yes. The Umlaut Anthology, <laughs> Fairy Hunter, 880 BD, The Circus from Beyond. <laughs> Ringelda had met, meant every word she had said when she left Gula Village. She would not return until she completed the dance. Her head still rang with echoes of the villagers' voices as she spun around faster and faster. She began the chant of the fairy fungus, calling forth the power of the flittering toadstools. <coughs> this time she would complete the chant and show that she was indeed a darkwood pixie, just like the rest of her village. It did not matter that she was nearly six times taller than any of the other pixies, or that she should have been able to finish the dance when she was six seasons old. She knew she belonged. If only she sh could complete the dance, she would show them. She would show them all she was indeed worthy of their incessant loving and encouragement. Such constant cheery praise, even in the face of her dancing failure, gnawed at her very soul. She circled faster, a bead of sweat running down her neck and past her bosoms as she, her flowing white dress rose higher and higher. As she turned, the towering kendis trees blurred in her vision. When her toned thighs burned with overexertion, she focused like a blue-eyed frappus and prepared to utter the final verse in the chant that would call forth the flittering toadstools. With a lusty cry, she recited the verse for all the forest to hear. Munja funja mustrate, trunja funja prostrate. With the final words uttered, she flopped to the ground like a dead ferangully fish. The wet, mossy ground glowed and pulsed around her as she struggled to catch her breath. She lifted up slowly, her eyes widening as a dozen shining toadstools pushed through the soil and began hitching and twitching with magical life around her. <laughs> By the fae, she exclaimed, I did it! She raised herself up as the magic mushroom lilted around her and joined them in the triumphant dance of the flittering toadstools. Jumping, twirling, stepping, and then the circus arrived. <laughs> the thundering sounds of half a dozen piccolos, magic instruments from the times of the old ones, reverberated through the woods. Startled, the toadstools scattered to the ten winds, running on tiny legs that carried them far too swiftly for mere mortals to see. Oh, fungus! Ridelta cried as the last scampering myopid disappeared under the ancient stump. It was a typical, as was typical, with the acoustics of the forest. The noise grew louder as it approached. <laughs> Captain Obvious. Soon the woodwinds were joined with raucous organ and drums. Ringelda dropped to the ground and crawled over a small rise to see what the cacophony was about. As she peeked her head over the hill, she spotted a long train of brightly covered wagons approaching from the forbidden direction. <laughs> Several of the wagon cars contained grotesque and fantastical creatures, wonders in midgets from places where Gelda could never imagine even if it were described to her in exacting, minute detail. <laughs> God, I love that sentence. Then with horror, she spied them. Circling around the rag wagons rapidly were over a dozen garishly costumed, jolly-looking clowns playing the piccolos. Their high-pitched melodies and the use of the Who's our editor? <laughs> this sentence just stops with, and the use of the. <laughs> there is no punctuation. It's like a Mad Libs. Their high-pitched melodies and the use of their flatulence <laughs> drew Ringelda to scowl. <laughs> Clowns, Ringelda sneered as she gnashed her teeth, remembering in great detail the terrors of her near-forgotten childhood. I hate clowns. <laughs> it was then that she heard a loud cry from the front of the caravan. The caravan driver, a man of ample frame, wearing a well-worn patchwork long coat and a bright red top hat, held the reins of the four glexing and, and urged them on with a cry. 
On, I tell you! Move it! Let's go! We've got to make Gula Village by sunset! She focused on the driver. There was something about him, something curious and familiar. She felt compelled by forces she could not fathom to investigate. As the remaining wagons came over the rise, Ringelda leapt over the top of the hill between, the two, between two of the horrific harlequins, sending one crashing into an ancient hit-stop trunk and the other into a foul, muddy ditch. She landed directly in front of the caravan and held her arm out to halt the wagons. Whoa! Whoa, I say! Yelled the driver. Shit. Whoa! Whoa, I say! <laughs> yelled the driver as he yanked the reins to draw the wagon train to a stop. The cart behind him, carrying nearly half a dozen blue and yellow striped Quonsets, barely avoided a crash into the lead cart. In ter and there's an extra space after cart before the period. We gotta fire that guy. In turn, each of the or gal, didn't mean to be sexist, sorry. Uh, where was I? Space period. In turn, each of the other 18 wagons and their drivers screeched and stuttered to a pause, screeched and stuttered to pause their advance. The plump driver sitting high above the ground on his driving bench furrowed his crusty brow as he examined Ringelda. What in the dunty farm set are you trying to do, little lady? <laughs> Ringelda's eyes widened as she lowered her hand. You... you think I'm little? Sure as my name is Hunley Hustick, the driver responded with a snap. <laughs> Ringelda paused slightly as her face glossed over in confusion. Is it? Well, of course it is, my dear. He replied as he hopped to the ground with surprising grace, especially considering his considerable bulk. Space, space, period. <laughs> Hunley Hustick of Hunley Hustick's Traveling Circus, curator of items of mystery and keeper of things unknown. Ringelda was in shock. Not only was this human the fattest one she'd ever seen, he was also the first. There was <laughs> something else striking about him, though. He was so <laughs> tall, nearly as tall as she was. Hunley was, in turn, examining Ringelda with equal scrutinization. He, too, seemed to find something familiar in her. He stopped for a moment and furrowed his brows as he examined her closely, surprise and shock crossing his features in equal measure. Gildy, is that you? <laughs> Who? Ringelda's confusion deepened, her nose crinkling as always in such circumstances. By the gods, it's you! Hunley's face lit up as he examined. I'd recognize that nose crinkle anywhere. Gildy, we have so much to talk about. We do? Sure thing! Hunley exclaimed as he wrapped his arm around her. Didn't you ever wonder where you came from? They don't teach that until next year in fairy school. Ringelda blushed at the mere thought of such forbidden topics. No, no, Gildy. I, I mean, where you were born, you know. Why are you different than the other pixies? Ringelda pulled away and stared at the ground. No, I, I, I never wonder. First, Papa Faye says, to wonder is to blunder. It makes trouble double. Second, Papa Faye says, we're all gifted in different ways. He says, I got all my gifts in my height, my rock-hard abs, and my firm buttocks. <laughs> <laughs> That's why I wasn't good at anything else. <laughs> oh, Hunley hesitated. Well, do I have a story to tell you, my little gal? It's all about where you came from. It's also about your mother. He paused. And your father. Ringelda's face lit up. You know Mama and Papa Fay? Hunley shook his head and sighed. He called over his shoulder to take the circus behind him. Take a break, boys. We're going to be here a while. <laughs> <laughs> As if on cue. Uh, oh, I'm sorry, we, we skipped a phase. Uh, are there any questions in the audience that one might have for more? I have a 
a question for you. Oh, yes. I was wondering if there was a particular story as to where your kilt came from. Some family lineage or... My kilt, you say? Yes. Well... <laughs> I would love to talk about my kilt. <laughs> it is... I'm stepping close... <laughs> I'm stepping closer so that you folks can get a better view of it that you can't see in person. <laughs> so, this kilt is uh, one of three kilts, actually, that is historically accurate down to each thread of the tartan. Now, the majority of the world thinks that there are only two. That of the Stuart, which is what the royal family in England wears, and also the Black Watch, which this is exactly extremely close to. <laughs> However, what is not known is that the McSterling Thong clan has one thread removed <laughs> from the Black Watch kilt. That is depicted in my great 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 grandfather's painting of his favorite sheep. 